Let's talk about how to mix drum sounds, including adding EQ, compression, and effects. I'm Keith from No Label, No Producer, No Limits.com. Let's dive right in. Okay, let's get some drum sounds. What we have here is a mixed song. Everything but the drums is mixed. And then the raw drum tracks. No EQ, no compression, no effects, no distortion, no saturation. Just the raw drum tracks. So we're going to pull these up and get them into some kind of shape here in the mix. And as you can see here, we have kick, snare, hi-hat, four toms, overhead, room mics, stereo room mics, and a cowbell. Now they've been cleaned up. Let's take a listen to them one by one. They're all turned down right now. There's the kick drum. Let's listen to the snare. Throw a little hi-hat in there. slightly. Now let's go for the toms. I'm going to just treat these as a group. There's a bunch of tom stuff going on in the beginning of the song. So you can hear reasonable sounds but nothing uh, spectacular. How about the overhead mics? And finally, the room microphones. Now the first thing I want to do is get the panning straightened out a little bit. I'm going to pan the hi-hat a little bit to the left and the rack tom, the first rack tom is on the same side as the hi-hat. So I'm going to pan that one left. The next tom a little bit less to the left. This tom slightly right and the floor tom a little bit further right so that we're going to have some spread on the toms here. Let's take a listen to what that does to them. There we go. So that's our drum sounds, and we've just gotten a little panning going. These overheads and the room sounds are stereo, so they're going to be panned straight up to the center. And we've got the cowbell panned a little bit off to the side from the hi-hat. Now, one thing that it's important to do with this phase is match your panning between your toms and your overheads. So in other words, this rack tom, the smallest tom, is on the same side of the kit as the hi-hat. So it's going to show up pan the same way, and it's going to show up in the same place in the overheads. So you want to listen to your overheads and see which side the drums end up on and pan them the same way. So these drum sounds are going to be a combination of the close mics. There's a close mic on the kick drum, for instance. But the kick is also coming in to the overhead mics and the room mics. So it's going to be a combination of those. And then the sound will change again when it's combined with the music because the music may have some competing frequencies in it. So we're probably going to listen to this in a combination of ways. There's going to be some listening individually with the close mics, some listening with the combination of mics, and some listening along with the music. I'm going to start off by turning everything down, all the drums down. Let's start off by listening to the music and then bringing the overhead mics in. Now 
Now, what I'm really looking for here is I want to get the level of the symbols up in the right ballpark in terms of the mix. So let's look for a part with a ride symbol, maybe some crash symbols. Okay, that seems okay to me. Let's go to a ride symbol part. Okay, there I can hear the ride symbol. Now you notice you can hear the kick and the snare fairly well here. So we're pretty hot here. I might end up bringing that down. So what I'm looking for here is a good combination between the overhead and the room. That gives me a little bit of sense of the room. I want the ride symbol to be in there so that I can hear it and I don't want the crash symbols to be overbearing. It seemed just a little bit hot to me. I'm getting a little too much of the crash symbols, but I'm going to bring these down. So just both of them down, just a few dB here, maybe two and a half, three dB. And let's see if we can get those symbols to sit right. Okay, that's more in the ballpark as far as I'm concerned. One of the problems in general when you're mixing is that sometimes mixes can sort of build up in the low area and the low mid area. So we want to clean up any low end that might be sort of muddying things up. In general, the low end is centered and the high end is more spread out in mixes. So we want to depend more on the low end with the close mics that we can straight up mono rather than the overhead and room mics, which are spread out a little bit. So let's add a little bit of a high pass filter to the low end. We'll start off with the room mic. I'm going to use the stock EQ here in Reaper called Re-EQ. And we'll put band one here in a high pass mode. And that's just to clean that up a little bit. Let's do the same thing to the overhead mics. I'm going to use a different EQ for this one just for fun. Use the slick EQ. And this one has a high pass filter right here. Now the advantage that re-EQ has is that you can see what's going on. So let's add a frequency analyzer plugin so we can see a little better.
So we've cut a few dB out of this area, which will allow the close mics to cut through the mix better. And we're still getting the attack from the kick drum and the toms and whatnot, so I think it's pretty good. I've high-passed the overheads and the room mic, so let's bring some kick drum into the mix here and see if we can get this kick popping. Okay, that brings some beef into the mix. Now, when you're working with the shells, the kick and the toms especially, there are sort of four areas that you want to look for when you're working with them. So let's pull up an EQ. I'm going to use Re-EQ, the Stock Reaper EQ, and we'll talk about them. The first one is the fundamental frequency, the beef, the heft, the thud, and uh, you'll see where that is here on the frequency analyzer as we play the drum here. I'm going to solo it up. You can see it's really strong here, right around 60 hertz. So let's take a listen to that. I'm going to put this low band into a band mode, and we can hear it. Sounds good right around there, 50, 60 hertz. Now, if you listen to something a little bit higher than that, there's kind of a boxy, woofy sound. And then there is the clack of the beater hitting the skin, which we can bring out up in the upper mid range. And then we have some presence that we can bring out on the high end. This is a shelf here, which we'll be able to hear. So these are the four frequency ranges that we're dealing with. One of the things I like to do is high pass the kick drum because we don't need this stuff below the fundamental. And if you tighten down the bandwidth, you get a sort of a resonant frequency here which we can use to tune in on the nice thud and cut down anything below it. That's nice. Now I'm going to pull some of that boxiness out. If we want to hear that a little better, we're going to boost this clack and we'll give this high shelf a little bit of a push as well. Okay, now we have the kick riding a little bit better with this EQ, tightening it up, bringing the low-end fundamental out, getting rid of some of the woof, 
having a little bit of the beater sound so that we can hear the kick when other instruments are in and adding a little presence as well. Okay, let's bring the snare drum in and see if we can get this puppy going. Okay, that seems like a good level. Let's solo it up here and see what's going on. I'm going to use a different EQ here just for fun. This is Reek. It's free. It's a JS extension plugin for Reaper. When we're working with a snare, we're looking for a couple of different areas. Once again, we want it to be beefy and powerful, but we also want the crack, the snap, uh, the sizzle from the top end. So let's see if we can find those areas. Now I think it's time to get a little bit of reverb happening. I chose a reverb here. What did I choose? Ah, Lexican 2 from Toucan. And let's just route the reverb from the snare. I'm just going to click on the route button and drag over to the reverb. As you can see here, I have the reverb set for 100% wet. I'm controlling it with this channel here. And let's EQ just a little bit of the low end out of that reverb because we don't need it muddying up stuff. So we'll see it on this analyzer. That way we cut some of this mud out. Let's see how it sounds in the mix. I'm starting to be okay with where that snare is. Honestly, I wish it had a little more bottom end. Let's route the kick to that reverb as well. I just want just a touch of reverb on the, on the kick drum. So let's listen to that, and I'm going to pull that send back until I have just a touch of reverb on it.
you've been watching so far, let me remind you to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Otherwise, you'll miss this kind of content in the future. We're okay on the kick and snare for now. Let's bring a little bit of the hi-hat in. Now, I've panned the hi-hat a little bit to the left side. That's where it's coming through on the overhead and the rooms. And that's one thing you want to do. Make sure your toms and your hi-hat match panning in the overhead and the room sound. So if it's coming out a little bit on the left in the overheads, you want the hi-hat panned a little bit to the left with the direct mic as well. So let's take a listen to that hi-hat mic and see what we want to do with that. Here's a section of the hi-hat that repeats a little bit. I'm going to set up a loop and play it. One little hit there on the hi-hat is loud somewhat. So when we're looking at a hi-hat, once again, I'm going to pull in re-EQ. There's really three areas that we want to be concerned with. One is, is there a lot of stuff going on here in the low end that we don't need? Secondly, there's the stick hit that we can bring out, which sort of drives the rhythm. And then there's the, sim the sizzle on top. So let's take a listen to those and see where those are here in this little loop. We don't need this stuff. Now you'll notice that the hi-hat is lost a little bit in the regular beat, and then when it opens up and does that tsst, tsst, it, it gets uh, loud. So let's compress that. I'm going to use the stock Reaper compressor, but any compressor will work. And let's try this, uh, well, attack overheads. We'll bring that in a little Okay, that's controlled a little bit better. I'm still going to bring that level up just a touch, maybe 1 or 2 dB. And so now we have kick, snare, and hi-hat. Let's throw a little bit of the hi-hat to the drum reverb and possibly pull that down a little bit. And when I look above and dream. That's getting there. So we have kick, snare, hi-hat, overheads, and rooms sort of in the ballpark. Okay, the next thing I'm going to work with is the toms. I have four toms here, and I've panned them out about like uh, they are in the kit. The hi-hat is panned to the left a little bit, and the first rack tom is pretty close to the hi-hat. Then the second tom is panned a little bit tighter than that. The third tom a little bit to the right, and the floor tom a little bit further to the right. Now I'm going to bring those up and make the volumes about equal, and then we'll deal with some EQ. But before I do that, I'm going to create a new track here, 
And I'm going to drag all the toms under that track, and that track is going to be the master for the toms. It's easy in Reaper. You just grab the track, select them, and pull them to the right. I'm going to label this. And now we have all of our toms going through this fader. So what I'm going to do is just uh, select them all so I can bring up the volumes equally. So here's a little section with all four toms. I created a selection. I'm going to loop them and bring them up together volume-wise and see if they're balanced. Okay, that's close enough for now. Let's hear how they are in the mix. What I'm looking for in these toms is the same thing I was looking for in the kick drum. We're going to look for the beef in the low end, the woof and the boxiness a little above that, the stick hit, and then the presence up high. So let's take a listen. Our low end is here. So let's take that and put our high pass filter here. And create the resonance peak and sweep it a little bit. That sounds pretty good. We'll look for the boxiness here. Sounds like it might have enough stick hit already, but let's check it out. Let's hear how that sounds in the mix. Let's do the same with the next tom. Now, we don't have to create a high pass filter there if we don't want to. We can make this a, uh, a band. I don't really think that needs any additional EQ up here, especially with the, a lot of the presence coming through from the overheads and room mics. Let's listen. Okay, sounds good to me. Let's try the next tom. Looks like the presence, the low end is right about here. We'll do a high pass there and do our little trick. This one doesn't hit as often, so let's just go straight to it. This one requires a little more high end. <laughs> that one needs a touch more volume as well. Okay, and then our last tom is right here. Also just one hit in this part of the song. Let's pop an EQ on. And look at what happens here in the analyzer.
Okay, and just for fun, let's route this puppy to the drum reverb. So I routed the master there. Let's take a listen. Okay, now I'd like to get these toms under control just a little bit dynamically. So let's do a compressor. I'm going to use TDR here, TDR Feedback Compressor. And it has a drum bus, uh, let's say controlled. I'll just try this one. We'll try it in the beginning section here where we have toms. So this is on the Tom Master, so it's going to compress them all. So I'm just taking about, I don't know, 4 to 6 dB off. Let's listen to that with the, ton with the compression on and off. Listen to the difference in the sustain of these toms. So that adds some to the sustain and keeps the levels a little more consistent. So now we have the whole drum kit in. Let's see what's going on. Okay, I think we're in the ballpark. I'd like to get a little bit more control over some of these drums. Just tighten up the dynamics a little bit, make them fit together, not wander all over quite so much dynamically. We have some compression on the toms and the hi-hat. Let's add some to the kick and snare, and also I think the room mics. Let's do that. So we'll solo the kick drum up and pull up a compressor. I'm just going to use a steady rock kick preset and see what happens. And immediately that tightens it up. Let's hear it in the mix. When I was just a boy on nights like these, I look to the stars for peace. And when I looked above and dreamed of love. I'm liking that. Let's try something on the snare as well.
Let's go for Rock Snare. I think that's bringing a little bit of control to the table. Now, I'm going to take a look at the room mics here and see if we can squish those up a little bit. I think that's going to bring some excitement into the drum sound. I'm going to go for these uh, vintage overheads here, just for fun. Now what I'm hearing here is a little bit more freedom when there's no compression. It's a little bit too squeezed. So I'm going to do some parallel compression here and bring some dry signal back in. Listen to what it does for the sustain on the snare and how it brings up the average level of the drums. I'm going to pull the high pass up a little bit. I don't want it to compress so much on those toms. When I was just a boy. I'm going to pull back on the threshold so we don't get quite as much compression. really brings the tail end of the snare out a little bit. Okay, so that's a little bit more controlled dynamics. I think I've taken a little bit of the life out of the snare with the compression that I've done, both on the snare and the room mic. Let's take a listen to the snare first by itself.
I think a little more reverb there helps changing the balance between the close snare mic and the room mic helps a little bit. I think we're more in the ballpark there. It was good to bring the reverb back up because I had taken the reverb send off the uh, drum master, which I didn't mean to do in the first place. Okay, so now let's take a look at parallel compression on the drums. Parallel compression is a technique by which you mix the compressed sound with the dry sound. It's also sometimes known as New York compression, and Recomp has a New York drum bus preset. So as you can see, we've got the wet and the dry signals mixed here. I'm gonna pull down the dry signal, and we're gonna look for, first of all, I'm just gonna set it for six to 12 dB of gain reduction. It's quite a bit. Swept over me You can hear how evenly the drums hit and how squished it is, but how everything is pumped, hyped kind of to the max. So we're going to bring some dry sound in. Into the night, lose my 
I think I'm just a little bit hot with the drums overall, so I'm going to just pull this down a dB and a half, 2 dB. Let's take a listen. Okay, I think we're in the ballpark. Now, there's a lot of things that I would do to put finishing touches on these drums. The toms seem a little bit um, erratic. There's some tom builds, bum, 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 and I would volume automate those to make them a little bit more dramatic. I would volume automate the snare reverb, especially for the breakdown part, make that reverb pop a little bit more for the breakdown. And I feel like the snare is perhaps a little bit over compressed, but that's a good idea of how to get your basic drum set mix happening. Okay, that's how to mix drum sounds. Now, if you found this content valuable, please like, subscribe, share, and comment so that you can get more of this content in the future. I'm Keith from No Label, No Producer, No Limits.com. See you soon.